feel like there's ownership with that data. And they really then are interested to see what's going to happen. Um, I think some of you know that I did that recycling project in the spring, and those students wholeheartedly were going and putting their hands in the trash every day after school, and really, I mean, they weren't supposed to be doing that exactly, but <laughs> separating the trash and going through it, and really, you know, people have commented that they were smiling while they were doing it, and I, I really just told them, you know, we're gonna make a big impact with this project, and, I, and they were sold. And, and I never, you know, had to force them to go do this. This is something they wanted to do. Um, so I, I thought about the five things that I do um, to form relationships with my students. I think without those relationships, I wouldn't have their buy-in. Um, and I really do make a conscious effort to do these things. So the five things that I really thought that I do is I, I, I do try to be real and personable, perhaps sometimes too much to a fault, but that's, I think I wear my emotions and thoughts and all that on my sleeve, and, and my students know that. Um, I try to grow with the material. I, I always am trying to be creative and engaging, accessible, and a coach and mentor. So I thought I would just describe a few things under those that uh, kind of go with it. So um, here's some examples of being real and personal. Uh, I, I really do explain with them reasons for decisions I make in class. So if I decide um, we really need to get that test in before break, I tell them why I'm doing it. Um, if I have to miss the day or something happens, I'm very upfront. I just, I feel like there's a, I, I tell them the first day, we are in a relationship together. This is a 10 week relationship. It might be longer this summer you have had or shorter, <laughs> but. <laughs> 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 but I do like to have a dialogue with them. Um, I do give them ownership in the class. So if it comes, um, you know, the last week of class and I'm kind of pushed for time, sometimes we'll vote on something. Do you think we should have the test this day or that day? Um, is it all right with you? I have another quiz. Let's vote on it. How many do we have? I, I think it's all right. And then they feel like they helped make that decision. Um, and it's easier to say that I'm going to have this test this day. Look, I mean, 23 people, you know, thought this would be a good idea. Seven didn't. And, but I can, I still say I can manage to work with those seven people. So, you know, even if it's not the majority, there's always a way to work around the problem if you're honest and just talk to them about it. Um, this one, I know I'm saying some things that are breaking rules, but I'm on in the evening working. I don't know about, probably you are too, but I mean, my typical hours are probably 10 to 1 a.m. And that's when students are doing their work. And I do get a lot of emails in that time. And it doesn't anger me, actually. I, I like it. And I like that dot dialogue that I have with them in the evening. And sometimes it's actually kind of motivating for me, too. They're sharing with me their problems. But sometimes I'll say, oh, I'm working on this. Just a minute, i go, got to go take the dog out. You know, it, you become somewhat personal with them. And especially my online courses this summer, I felt like I really had that personal interaction with students. They were taking the class from all over the world. And it, it's really exciting to listen to their stories and have that dialogue. And I felt like I really got close to many students this summer. Um, I have written about things. And in our newspaper, I, I wrote an article on depression and anxiety. And um, I know it's hard for you to believe I'm anxious. I, I just doesn't know why. <laughs> but um, I, I think it's very important. You know, I was a very anxious student. Um, and I had panic attacks. And I know what that's like. Um, I wasn't, I mean, you know, my brother, he's so, so smart. It's just off the top of his head. I had to work so hard to do well. And I was always very anxious in class. Um, I had a professor who suggest I go to see a counselor. And I do the same thing with some of my students. I know numbers of people that I can refer them to if it's more serious than just our counseling, you know, can deal with. But depression is real, anxiety is real, and um, I'm not afraid to share my stories with them too. And uh, so I do all, some fun activities. So they do get to know me. And the one thing I do talk a lot about in my class is my mom. Um, most, of, you know, most of them have guardians. So the, the relationship with child and parent is, is known. And I, and, you know, and I feel comfortable talking about my mom, my dogs, my parents. Um, so one thing I do in class uh, on a weekly basis, I, I made up a game that's called Letters from Mom. And so here's kind of how it goes. So every week, truthfully, sometimes twice a week, my mom sends me a letter. So really, it looks like this. Um, <laughs> and um, it's called a uh, letter from mom. There's always two things in the letters that she sends me. Well, she sends me usually a card or a note, and I always show them that. Um, 
but there's always two other things that are in this letter. So anybody want to take a guess of one thing that's always in there? Money. Money. Oh, who said that? Okay, so here's another tactic. So we have lots of games. Look at the fun things you can win. A little more will hurt. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> 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 there's, um, yeah, there it is. So money is one thing. And uh, does anybody know what the other one is? Candy. What's that? Candy. Oh, no, because you make it heavy and she's very cruel. Okay. <laughs> No, she, no, she's not into that. Coupons. Okay, yeah, no, no cutoffs. Coup not well, sometimes, but really not. No. Coupons. Like What's that? Coupons. No. Um. So <laughs> <laughs> she gets a lot. Okay, so when the what about a joke? Coupons. Oh, coupons. Okay. My parents are frugal, so every week my mom's giving me the dog food coupons and the, you know, chemo. It's not like that. It's very nice. Yeah. And, um, but anyway, so the students guess how much money is in the letter and who's ever closest wins a prize in class. And then if there's a tie, the tiebreaker is the number of coupons. So they have to do both guessing. And it's a really fun game. So some days I'll come to class and be like, you doing a letter for mom? Or did you get a letter yet for mom? Or tell your mom she didn't send a letter. <laughs>
show that we could definitely save money, thousands of dollars per quarter if we implemented some of the suggestions from that study. Um, just some of the other projects. Here's the um, one where we're taking a look. What are those called again? Honey's, yeah, the honeysuckle. So they're all over, right, all over campus. So one group tried to do the removal of these. We were trying different tools um, for efficiency. So that's the honeysuckle one. Um, you might have seen a couple years ago we did Java City during passing periods, which is crazy busy. So we were trying to get more customers through per hour. Um, and here's the trash one. Uh, this, yeah, one day we just, I, I was, I didn't even realize how much trash we had. So I just asked from the weekend all the dorm trash to go down to the recycling center and we would separate it. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. But then, uh, the students went. Uh, some of Patsy's here students came and helped us out. It was, it, I mean, when the students actually visibly saw how much trash there, they were amazed. Um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about trash. I was so amazed. There's, there's so much things you saw, you see in the trash, but there was one thing just quite horrible. I, I, I mean, it was disgusting. Wait till you see what I saw in the trash. <laughs> <laughs>
usually in five minutes, you don't even hardly get started in class. In five minutes, you're done, you have real data. Um, students remember fun exercises. And they remember later, I did some, what we were doing, oh yeah, we were looking at frequency, independence, mutual exclusive, I learned all these terms. Uh, they can conceptualize probability topics. So for example, we talk about mathematical independence, and mathematical independence is one of them doesn't affect the probability of the other. So when I roll the two pigs, definitely that's an independent. What lands on the two pigs is independent because one pig doesn't affect what the other pig lands on. So it's a nice way to say that's what I mean by independence. One doesn't affect the other. Um, this is data they collected. So after they spent five minutes, I have them tally up on the board how many pigs <coughs> they got, and I can use those probabilities throughout the class to bring up you know, how to add probabilities, how to multiply probabilities, how to condition on probabilities. And um, a lot of students play this field in class then. They'll take it away, they'll try to write programs for it, um, they'll go to download it. So a lot, I get a lot of mileage out of this game and it allows me to ham it up in class. <laughs> Sweating in your arms, and then a project came out of that. 
Um, the baseball team, this is the baseball they gave me at the end of the season. They had a great season. Um, I like to go to plays. I love the plays they put on here. The first year I thought, engineering school, I'm gonna go to a play. I just like, this is it. Okay, I'll go, because I was on, we used to have that performing arts committee. And so I was behind <laughs> out programs my first year, and I thought, oh my goodness. And it was just great, and I was so surprised, and I thought, oh, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have ever known if I hadn't gone. Um, I've, I've taken students to conferences, um, some of the different student groups. It's been great. Our students are so responsible, so mature, and people, when we take them to conferences, are just amazed at how great our students are. Um, and here's a student from China. He brought me back. A, he said, this is the version of the Snoopy in China. So I was, so when you know, when they know what you like, they really like to get in and participate with you. So this is my Chinese Snoopy. Um, the last thing, I, I really think pep talks are important. Um, I had a professor at Ohio State that he'd say, okay, today I want to give you guys a pep talk. I mean, we just did really bad on the test. You feel really miserable. I think pep talks are so important, especially when you give a test back, you know, just, just to talk about it. Now, some of you didn't do the way you want to do, that doesn't mean life is over, let's talk about it, so pep talks are, are good. I mean, sometimes you, you were that person. Why am I here, what am I doing, why am I at this school, is this the right place for me? And I think it's really important to help others. So one of my favorites is Carol Burnett. I, I love her comedy, but you know, she said it, it, it might seem selfish, but giving away kindness really gives a lot to you. I mean, what you give gives back to you, and I, I just think it's beautiful. And from Charles Schultz, I think as long as you do something with sincerity, it's, it's going to work. I mean, my students know, I think, I, I really take that time to build that rapport with them, and I, I believe they know that I sincerely want them to learn, and all my actions show that. So that's, I think, how I've been able to build such a good relationship with them. And in conclusion, I just thought I would say thanks to my mentors, and especially um, Dr. Graves and, and Dr. Watson Kaiser. And I've had some hard times here. I mean, I never, I never thought I would be standing here if, if you knew me a few years ago. It didn't look like that. So. Um, I just really appreciate everybody's patience and help getting through some really hard times and making it to this spot. So that's it.